Hey, Chris here, and today I wanted to talk about a topic that I mentioned in a previous episode about how traveling by yourself can get lonely. I've had that that problem a little bit in the past where, you know, I go to some exotic place, but I'm by myself, you know, none of my friends want to come with me because they all have work or they have responsibilities or or whatever it is. And so, you know, I got to, uh, being, being in a nice place is, is great, but if you don't have anyone to share it with, it's just, it's, it's you know, could be better, you know, so um, I wanted to talk a little bit about that. And in fact, that was actually part of the motivation for my course, the, the Digital Nomad University and the, the stuff I've been writing about this stuff is because I want to have my friends be able to come along with me. I want them to be able to experience the same freedom that I experience and to have them as companions on my journeys. So anyway, I decided this episode, I'd, I'd give you a few ideas for how to travel by yourself uh, and not get lonely. So, you know, obviously the best thing to do is to, to bring somebody with you, but assuming that you can't do that and you don't want to wait for all your friends who only get two weeks of vacation per year uh, to be available to come with you, then I, you know, don't hold yourself back. You can make friends on the road. And there's a whole bunch of different ways that you can do that. Now, um, uh, I... The first thing I want to talk about in that is that uh, that as an American, for, for me, it's very easy to meet people. Um, and something that Americans seem to be uneasy about, we think that the whole world hates us. It's not really true. You know, if you're an American and you're abroad, then people, honestly, people treat you like a celebrity. Everybody wants to meet you. And even the people who are antagonistic towards Americans, even those people feel that way because out of a sort of, you know, inferiority complex, a sort of jealousy, because, you know, this is something that I didn't realize until I started traveling, but uh, the whole world is watching, uh, watching Hollywood movies and watching American TV. They just translate it or they put subtitles. Like you, I, I went to the movie theater yesterday here in Colombia, and like every single movie, they, they said whether or not they had the... Uh, they had the audio overdubbed in Spanish, or they had it with titles in Spanish, right? None of the movies were originally Spanish. They're all American movies. So everybody around the world has this kind of idealized version uh, in their minds of what of who Americans are. So they kind of uh, they kind of look up to us, and it might be a, a you know an admiration or it might be jealousy. But either way, you know, and, and you know, it's not not entirely accurate. Obviously, not all Americans are like with actors but that's what that's kind of what the world thinks of you so if you're an American abroad then then um, yeah everybody wants to meet you so it's real easy for you anyway so some of the ways to actually meet people one of my favorite ways is to stay in the hostels um, and you know this is not for everybody because hostels are cramped and the facilities usually suck but they're cheap they're in uh, they're usually in good parts of town or at least like fun parts of town and they're full of, of travelers. A lot of them are people who are traveling alone, and they're there to have fun, party. They're they're great people to meet if you want to. If, um, if you know if you're doing that thing and you have to work during the day, then maybe hostel isn't such a great environment for you because you know everybody else is just there on vacation. They all so uh, you can you can find some hostels that are a little quieter that aren't you know they aren't going to be raging all night long. So you can get your sleep, and then also you can you can get a private room in a hostel if you want. Those are a little pricey usually, but if you if you value privacy and you know you need to work during the day and not be interrupted, then that's a good option too. And then uh, you know what, being in a private room, you get your privacy when you want to, but also you can still use a lot of areas and and make friends there. It's super easy to approach because everybody's there to have fun. Everyone's there to have a good time. They're more than more than happy to meet new people, and you meet people from all over the world. It's pretty cool. Um, oh, and you don't even you don't actually have to stay in the hostel to do that. Honestly, you could just go to a hostel during the during the evening time. Usually, hostels will have like an on-premise bar, and you can just go to the hostel, order a beer, and start talking to people and make friends. It's super easy that way. Uh, another good way is meetup groups. There's if you especially if you're in your uh, digital nomad kind of city like like Medellin where I am, then there's a lot of people that will have meetup groups for foreigners. Like they'll have uh, language exchange groups where where uh, 
where gringos who are trying to learn Spanish will will talk with with natives who are trying to learn English, and that's a good way to meet people. Uh, and there's you know meetup group for everything you think of. There's meetup for yoga, meditation, or learning or politics or whatever it is that you're interested in. So that's a good way. People who have come uh, as Facebook groups, there there a whole bunch of groups for in particular cities, again, especially if it's in a digital nomad city. I'm in a group for, for digital nomads in Medellin that's uh, it's like over it's several thousand people in this group, right? So there's there's a lot there, and that's just for Medellin. There's also, you know, more general uh, digital nomad groups where you can meet people that and just, like, ask where they are. So, for example, the Digital Nomad Global Community, that's uh, the digital nomad group that I have. Um, ask me about that if you're interested in that, but that's a good way to meet people who are abroad and the same kind of thing is you can just put a post in there saying hey is anybody in Medellin and you know have people uh, anybody that happens to be in the city that you're in who's in the group they can answer you can go uh, recommendations about lunch and go go meet people um, another way of course is dating apps if you're single get on get on tinder get on POF whatever um, meet some nice people of the opposite sex and uh, and you know, there's there's a whole whole thing about that. I won't go into it too much. You know, you want to meet in public. You don't want to get you don't want to like get beaten up and robbed because you know bad things do happen in other countries, and uh, so you want to be safe about it. Um, now, well, this of course this applies to anything here. Now, uh, another good way to meet meet the locals is through couchsurfing. And even if you are not clearly uh, enthused by the idea of sleeping on a stranger's couch or sleeping in a stranger's house, which is to understand you can still meet people because the people who are the locals, they are on there because, generally speaking, they want to meet uh, interesting foreigners. So you just post something on couch surfing, say, hey, anybody, anybody want to want to go to the bar Friday night, right? And, um, and a lot of times you'll, you'll get a lot of takers. I did that. Uh, I did that once and, and I got like 10 replies or something from locals who just wanted to meet me just to, just to hang out. Um, now with both, uh, both the dating apps and the couch surfing or whatever you're doing, if you're meeting people who are locals, if they speak a different language, if you're meeting them online, uh, be aware that some of them will, uh, will misrepresent their English speaking ability. So I've had this experience a couple times where I was a girl online and she, and she, her, perfect. And then I meet in person, and she doesn't speak a word of English because she's using Google Translate the whole time. So, you know, if you don't speak the native language, um, that's something to keep in mind. That could be kind of a pain in person if you don't want to be speaking through Google Translate the whole time. So, ask them, just, you know, ask them to be honest do they speak English or be honest about your ability to speak their native language. And then uh, meet people in bars, you know, same as, the, same as you would anywhere else, same as you would at the the hostel bars are my favorite, personally. And then there's uh, there's walking tours in a lot of cities and other other sort of touristy stuff. The walking tours are nice because they're oftentimes they're free. Usually there's a big group and it's it's pretty easy to meet people there because they're all tourists. They're all doing the same thing as you, so you can establish commonalities pretty easily. And then uh, the last way I wanted to talk about is if you're if you're working, if you're doing the digital nomad thing. Then the uh, either co-working spaces where people come specifically to work, and um, certain coffee shops that I've noticed are like the the gringo hangouts where where the digital nomads go to work. They you know they have good Wi-Fi there. Excuse me a moment. And good way it's easy to start on a conversation with somebody. You say hey, you look like a you look like a too. What are you what are you working? You know, if you're doing digital kind of work and they're doing that kind of work, then you're both doing something pretty interesting. You can strike up a conversation that way. Um, you know, ask the person to go to lunch, etc. Anyway, that's all I got for today. If you got any questions or, or uh, funny stories about meeting people on the road, let me know.